By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I am playing EC Rules Old School. So that means we're going to see Fallen Empires. That means we're going to see probably tons and tons of strip mines. I'm playing against Dane, by the way, from the United States, and he's got a pretty cool deck. It's called Evil Eye of the Underworld. It is a mono black deck, so I can already see those him to Turex coming. But I myself, I'm playing with a mono red goblin deck. So I've got my goblin grenades ready to roll. So um, before we start, I'm first going to do a little bit of deck tech. I have deck pictures of both of these decks. If you're into EC, I think you'll find them quite interesting. If you want to go straight to the games themselves, no worries. Check the description below. There you will find a timestamp. Click on a timestamp and that will take you straight to game number one. And here we are going to continue by looking at the deck of my opponent today, Dane. And here we see the deck of my opponent. We see the deck of Dane. And uh, he told me that what he's kind of going for with this deck is he wanted to make mono black, but he didn't want to make your typical mono black aggro deck, uh, which is a very strong deck, by the way, especially in Eternal Central. Uh, but he said, you know, I'm going to go for... I'm, I'm not going to build the rag deck. I'm not going to build an aggro deck. I want to build kind of more a control deck. So he's chosen to go for four Underworld Dreams, Obviously, they work together very well with the Howling Mines. You know, you can deal double damage to your opponent. An interesting and I think a very good inclusion of this deck are the two Relic Barriers. Um, Relic Barrier, of course, works very well with Howling Mine. He can tap it down, making sure that he's the only one drawing extra cards. And once he has all his uh, Underworld Dreams on the table, he can start seriously dealing damage and deciding to let your opponent draw the extra cards. Now, another really interesting... Um, thing here of course uh, about this deck or the full play set of evil eye uh, here now evil eye is a creature it's uh, one black and four it's a three six creature and when you cast it uh, it reads that it cannot be blocked except by walls and it is the only creature that creature type that can attack so if you have two evil eyes on the board you can attack with both of the evil eyes but if for example you would have a hypnotic specter and evil eye then only your evil eye can attack like no other creatures can attack so it's quite interesting basically it's an unblockable creature and the only other creature that you place next to the evil eye is the willowed wisp and i really like this it's a very classic creature um you know willow is just it's an o1 regenerate it can block everything especially in a mono black deck where you probably always will have that extra black mana open and talking about black mana he's also playing with a full play set of drain life interesting choice personally i would have gone maybe for two or three drain life but he's going with a full play set and i mean drain life is a good card especially in a mono black deck you can damage your opponent and you can gain life yourself Early game, you can take care of creatures that maybe the Will of the Wisp cannot block for whatever reason. Uh, he's also packed four Dark Rituals, so this can even be a late game winner for him. You know, just using the Drain Life to take uh, to take those few lives that your opponent still still has, especially in combination with the Underworld Dreams. I can see that being really really tricky. Uh, obviously, there's also a discard package in his deck in the form of the Mind Twist and the two uh, or the four Him to Turex. And he's playing with four sinkholes. So it's kind of, I, I see some control elements in this deck and I see some more, you know, uh, standard, more aggro cards in this deck like him to Turek and the sinkhole. So I'm really curious to see how all these cards combine and, and how they do together. Now, this is the deck of Dane. Um, let's take a look at my deck. Let's take a look at the mono red goblins and here we see my deck so as you can see it's a mono red goblins deck um you know mono red goblins is very strong in eternal central for the simple reason that you can add four goblin grenades and goblin grenades just creates it's a sorcery from fallen empires one red it says sacrifice a goblin and deal five damage to any target so when you're playing with four lightning bolts four chain lightnings and four goblin grenades you have so much damage I don't really have to do all that much combat damage. And if I can get an early Black Vice out, I mean, my opponent is going to get just an extra Lightning Bolt because of that three damage from the Vice, if I'm on the play at least. And um, one of the challenging things with this deck actually is when your opponent plays with white, when they have a circle of protection white, and when they can get that on the board on time with enough mana to back it up. Now that on time, of course, is very important because all my burn is relatively cheap. So even when they do board in uh, a COP red, I can still play so quick that I can just get enough chains, get enough bolts, 
um, you know, and possibly get a grenade out there or maybe even a successful ball lightning so that I can already kill my opponent before the COP red can actually do something. Um, but one of the things that I want to work around the circle protection red is, of course, by going for artifacts. So you can see my sideboard there. Um, I'm playing with four copper tablets. Um, I put them in because when I'm on um, the draw myself, I'm going to board out the black vices and I'm going to put in four copper tablets instead. So that's kind of like a basic thing that I, I'm trying out with this deck. So whenever I'm not uh, on the play, I'm going to board my vices out and I'm going to put four copper tablets in. At least I would usually do that. I mean, every deck can be different, so there can maybe still be reasons for me to keep playing a vice, but usually I wouldn't. Um, as you can see, I'm also playing with a full playset of Suchis and Juggernauts in my sideboard, even a Mishra's Workshop, a Soul Ring, and a Nevernural's Disc. So really, what I can do is I can do a completely rebuild. So if my opponent is going to go lean back with the COP Red uh, tactic, I can basically take out most of my goblins, um, and I can just go on the artifact train and I will still have my uh, quick direct damage to use um, But instead of my goblin threats, I have much bigger threats. I've got big artifacts I'm kind of like testing testing that out. Of course the dream of this deck is to play a bloodlust Over uh, a chain lightning and just dealing 10 damage in one go And also I just like the idea of playing a deck with lightning bolt chain lightning bull lightning So hopefully I get to see a lot of lightning here in this game. So um this is my deck. I don't think I have to explain much more about it. Uh, it pretty much explains itself. I'm curious to see how it's going to hold up against uh, Dane's more controlish Black Belt. Um, let's go to game one and find out. Game number one. And as you can see, I'm sitting on the left and Dane is sitting on the right. There is a basic swamp. And boom, Goblin Grenade. This is what I want to do. Uh, just put a lot of pressure on there. I've got a lot of one drops, so it's not that surprising. Four Goblin Grenades and for um, Goblin of the Flark, and look at that, ay 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 him to Turek very early in the game, which is not great, because they don't have a lot of ways to draw cards. Look at that, that Bloodlust, because I wanted to play the Bloodlust, and also, actually the Wheel of Fortune, very painful for me here. And look at that, a double Goblins of the Flark, so that means at least next turn I can hit him for three, hopefully. Maybe he's gonna find a Willow to do some blocking. And let's see. Tapping one black for a Will-O-The-Wisp. And that means he can block one. And of course here we see a downside of the Willow and that is that you're not killing your opponent. It doesn't even have one power, but it is of course an excellent blocker. And that means two more damage here for my opponent. So he's dropping to 17. And he's gonna draw card number four, tapping three and playing an Underworld Dreams. I'm tapping my army here, taking a damage from the dreams, finding a strip mine, and here he goes, he blocks one, and I'm passing turn here. Now you have to realize, I don't know what Dane is playing uh, beforehand, so I was just constantly waiting for like a hippie, or like your traditional, or pump knight, like your traditional black creatures and then he came with this the evil eye which is fantastic uh, and of course I cannot block the evil eye taking a damage hopefully I didn't forget so I'm going to 18 exactly I think Dane reminded me here taking care of a swamp which is a little bit too late actually I'm not sure why I'm doing that here oh finding a goblin king that's very good actually just attacking with the flyer here he cannot regenerate so he's probably going to take the damage and I'm not attacking with the Goblins of the Flark because that Evil Eye is a fantastic blocker with 3 power and 6 toughness. So it can just take care of one of my Goblins. And interesting to see here, since we're both playing Mono, that those Strip Mines are probably not going to play a very big role in this matchup. And we see a Demonic Tutor. And I'm very low on cards. Of course my deck is very quick, but also that him to Turek losing two cards and losing my Wheel of Fortune. So when I saw my opening hand, I was very happy because I wanted to play Bloodlust turn two, dealing five damage. Then he already lost a quarter of his life total. That was it in my mind. And then quickly play all the, the one drops and play that Wheel of Fortune. But things went differently here. And he looked up another card and passing turns. He's not gonna play it out directly. Uh, taking another damage from the dreams here. Another Goblins of the Flark. And now it could have been useful, and that's why I said I shouldn't have 
used its strip mine yet. Oh, look at this. This is interesting. Using my chain lightning after he regenerated, he's got no black mana open, at least taking care of one of his willows. And that means that next turn with the flyers, I can at least deal two damage to him. Uh, because those goblins of the flark are, of course, two twos because of the goblin king. I mean, goblin balloon brigade, sorry. And there we see a drain life. It's probably the card he picked up with the demonic tutor. So well done there from my opponent, Dane. Um, and he also gets life, which is not great for me. Because the more life he has, the better and the more time he has to do things like this, like attacking with the evil eye. It does mean that I'm going to turn my four creatures sideways now. But remember, he's back on 15 after that drain life. Hitting him for four is going to block one and regenerate, taking three damage. Do I have another... No, I thought for a moment there may be another Chain Lightning or Lightning Bolt to take care of that last Willow, but that's not going to happen here. I am playing another Flyer with the Goblin Balloon Brigade. It's actually a very useful creature. One red and you can give it flying. Ooh, another Underworld Dreams. That means I'm taking two damage. And dropping to 11 here. And he's now keeping the Evil Eye untapped. Giving everything what I can, flying the Goblin uh, Balloon Brigades. He's tapping, blocking one and regenerating, taking two damage, going to 10. But remember, I'm taking two damage a turn now. If he can find another Dreams, it's going to be even more horrible. Only one card in hand. I need something like a Bloodlust, a Goblin Grenade. I mean, there's so much damage in my deck. I'm on 11. I'm probably going to drop to 9. If he attacks with the eye, I'm going to drop to 6 even. Another evil eye, so he's probably going to attack. And that means I'm going to drop to 8. And I have to draw. That means I'll drop 2 more. Go to 6 life. Wow, wow, wow. That means next turn he can actually kill me with the 2 evil eyes. He is on 10, so I need something. I just need tons of direct damage, but only one card in hand. The only thing I can do, yeah, just attack with everything. I wonder what I have. And he's blocking one. And look at that. I'm actually not um, giving it flying. Instead, I'm going to play Disintegrate for four. That means he's on three, but that's not going to be enough. Attacking here. That's it. That's game one. Well played. Even two more evil eyes there. Oh, beautiful to see here. Winning with the evil eyes. And there you can see... Once you have those evil eyes on the board and the, and you have those underworld dreams, it can go very, very quickly. Um, we are going to go to our sideboards and uh, then we'll catch up in game number two. Game number two. And, uh, you know, I was I was pretty close. He was on three. I'm not un unhappy. I think that the him to tour, I could just hit two really two crucial cards, especially the bloodlust. If I could have played a bloodlust turn two, dealing five damage. He probably, uh, maybe I would have just made it, but um, okay, game number two, at least I'm on the play, dropping a mountain here. Looks like I don't have a turn one play. Interesting, I still decided to keep the hand, so I guess I've got some other firepower. Usually, when I don't have a one drop, okay, I guess I top decked a black vice here. I'm really curious what else I have in my hand. Because after two turns in a goblin deck and only have a vice on the board, it's not, it's not where you want to be. Um, but then again, maybe I've got a Chain Lightning, for example, in hand, and I'm planning to deal 6 damage next turn. There is an Urborg and a Dark Ritual. 3 mana. What is going to happen here? Tapping for... F oh, Mind Twist for 3. I, uh, I had that him in game 1. Now I've got a Mind Twist. And I'm thinking about playing something. Maybe I'm thinking about playing out my Lightning Bolt. And maybe you're wondering why I'm not doing that. Um, I probably want to um, want to protect other cards. Look at what I'm losing here. A Mountain, a Lightning Bolt, and a Goblin King. The Goblin King would have been a really nice 3-drop next turn. But that's not going to happen. Ay ay ay! This is pretty painful. And I'm just passing turn. I can't do anything. I'm playing a goblin deck with two mountains and it can't do anything. This is horrible. There's an Underworld Dreams and now I'm putting my life total back on the table. Dropping to 19, of course, because of the Underworld, having to pass turn again. This is looking... This is not looking good for me. 
Remember, I need to be the guy um, that has the early game of the match, and that's not really happening right now. And there we see a Relic Barrier. Not too useful against me yet, but of course when he gets his Howling Mine on the battleground. And there's a Goblins of the Flark. At least I've got something to attack with if he doesn't play a blocker. Him to Turek. Ah, oh, gonna lose more cards even. Two, oh no, look at that. And then we see a Suchi coming in from the sideboard. Probably to have a little bit more beef. And there's a Goblin King. At least I can swing in for two here, but the Chain Lightning. Oh, a terror. It looks like Dane's got it pretty much under control. But hey, I'm still on 17. I'm still in this. He's on 15, so it's not all that bad. I mean, he's taken... Um, Taking some damage from the vice, but now his card total is low enough. Attacking again, he just doesn't have a blocker at least. But next turn, he can start deploying those evil eyes again. And I'm actually passing turn, choosing not to do anything. Only two cards in hand. I've just lost so many cards. And when you're playing like an aggro burn deck, um, you need every single card you have. There's a dark ritual. Will we see a drain life maybe? Tapping, yes, there we see a drain life for four. Ay, 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 that means that Dane is going up to 18. I'm dropping to 12, dropping to 11 because of the underworld dreams. I am actually liking the drain lives, and when you're playing with four drain lives, you can use them more aggressively. And I'm trying to put some pressure now on Dane as well with that chain lightning, bring him to 14. Hopefully he cannot find an evil eye. At least that's something I can keep hitting him for one. It's, you know, every damage counts with this deck. Another Chain Lightning dropping to 10. So, you know, let's say I find a Bloodlust and then a Goblin Grenade. And I still, okay, okay. I had a dream, but now it's kind of gone with the evil eye. And tapping four here. Playing a Navanerl's Disc. Oh, this is fantastic. Next turn I can blow everything up. The disc coming from the sideboard, I boarded it in against those Underworld Dreams. And he's probably going to swing in for three. I'm going to drop to six, take a card. That means, or actually I can use the disc before I draw a card, I guess. Untap, upkeep, so I can use it in my upkeep. Dropping to six here, untapping. And yeah, now I'm realizing that I can actually activate it before I draw. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. So everything's gone, and I think maybe this is going to save my life, because he's on 10. Oh, this is great. Wheel of Fortune. And look at that. I'm explaining that I was, I wanted to go to my main phase to sack my goblin with the grenade, but I just didn't want to take the extra damage, dropping all the way to 5, so I chose to go this route. Um, if it will be the right one, we'll just know at the end of the game. There are all these little decisions you have to make. Of course, I still have a mountain and my mana, my land drop for the turn, I mean. So let's see if I can play a creature. Ooh, this is even better, a black vice. And remember, he just drew seven. That means that Dane's gonna take three damage, dropping to seven here himself. Or actually two seven, because I'm on six. So all of a sudden, all of a sudden tables have turned. And remember, I am the direct damage player. Yes, I've played two chain lightnings, and I've lost the Lightning Bolt in the process, but I still have enough direct damage. Ay, 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 another him to Turek. And that, I mean, that discarding is just brutal. It's just brutal. Even when you're having a, a Goblin deck, it's just very, very brutal. But hey, I'm not dead yet. Dane's on, on seven, I'm on six. Can I find, ooh, Chain Lightning. There's a Terror, ay, this is painful. Playing a Goblin Grenade, taking care of one of his swamps. And the reason I'm doing this is because I know that he's got Evil Eyes now from game one. So I know that with four mana, he cannot play out the Evil Eye. So by doing this, I'm hoping that he cannot find the land and play an Evil Eye. He's taking damage, by the way, from the Black Vice, dropping to five life. If I can attack and I have a Bloodlust, I can kill Dane. That is, if he doesn't have a terror. And I guess those terrors came from the sideboard. Of course, a very good card against me. Ooh, playing a Demonic Tutor. And now the question is, is he going to choose to build? 
so to choose a card to give him advantage later or is it going to choose for safety for example another terror to take care of the uh, goblin balloon brigade I think when you're on five and I'm on six, you have to kind of take the risk. But of course, I don't know what's in his hand. Um, you know, maybe all he needs is another land drop to play in Underworld Dreams, for example. So we'll just have to see what he's going to do. I'm hoping that he's going to pass. And tapping one Dark Ritual into an Underworld Dreams. Passing turn. I'm going to drop to five here. Attacking, and that's it! Boom! Bloodlust! Oh man, very, very lucky here. Taking this second game, and uh, oh, another Bloodlust even. And in all honesty, I didn't see that coming. At a certain point in the game, I thought it was I was dead meat, um, because Dane, you had it under control. I think the only reason I could get back into this was the Neverneural Disc from the sideboards. So it's 1-1 now, and that means we're going to game number three. Game number three, and it is 1-1 one, one here. Uh, let me know, by the way, what you think of these EC games. I see that I've taken a mulligan, putting a card there on the bottom. So that's not great for me. Uh, playing a Goblin Balloon Brigade. I must say I really enjoy these games uh, against Dane. Interesting uh, take. Ooh, I mean, I, I'm not enjoying these hymn tutorials. I have to be honest. But, you know, it's something that you kind of prepare for, um, especially playing Black, playing EC. Uh, against black uh, in the AC ruling and you know once you get over it it's fine look at this this is great for me this is what I want to do turn two uh, bloodlust over a goblin being able to do five damage your Dane's already lost a quarter of his life total um, and uh, what I wanted to say is like I, like I like these games they're interesting they're too it's a different way of playing when you're playing AC um, there is a soul ring and tapping four here, there's a Nevenerals disc. And I don't think we've seen a disc before from Dane. And this is an interesting situation, by the way. I choose to strip his strip mine. I think in hindsight, I think I should have taken a swamp, to be honest. Uh, because he plays Drain Life. And just, you know, I don't really mind him stripping on my side of the board. But then again, I'm not sure what my um, what my hand is. Maybe I'm stuck with three drops. And this is great for me playing a Howling Mine. That means I can draw into answers. You know, I was pretty low on cards because of that him, And now he's making up for it. Dealing Chain Lightning is going to drop to 11 here. So again, I mean, this time he's not taking five damage, but he's taking four damage. He is finding Evil Eye, but... I mean, I'm racing right now. And if I can find, for example, a Goblin Grenade and some more direct damage, giving it flying, he's going to drop to 10. And playing another chain, he's going to go to 7. And this, of course, is a problem when you're playing against this deck uh, that I'm playing with. Look at that Goblin Grenade dropping to 2. So all I need now is, I don't know, Disintegrate for 2, uh, another chain, another bolt. Goblin and a, a grenade, you know, that's what I want to say. This is trouble when you're playing against an aggro red deck. Uh, it, it's going so fast. And when you're choosing to play a Howling Mine, you're actually filling my hand. Like, I understand um, it's part of Dane's uh, tactic with the Underworld Dreams. And, I mean, he's probably pointing out as well to the Nevenerals disc, saying, you know, if you would build up a board, I could always blow the disc. And that, of course, is the problem when you're playing against Mono Red Goblins. I'm not really building up any board presence. I'm just trying to deal tons of damage. This is a pretty useful card against me, um, you know, playing that Drain Life because it gives Dane some life. And here we see a card from the sideboard playing a Suchi. And I actually realized after playing it that I forgot to take the extra card. So that would have affected my, my play, but it was my bad. So there's a Suchi now on the board. I mean, it's not bad. It's a 4-4. Four, four. Uh, remember, if he uses the disc, because we're playing Eternal Central Rule, we have Mana Burn. So that means I'm probably going to take four damage from my own Suchi. You know, that's not great. Another Howling Mine. I mean, wow, this is very gutsy. It is really nice with the Underworld Dreams, but the big problem is he's already on four. Choosing not to attack me to keep it as a blocker for the Suchi. Attacking with both here, playing a chain uh, bow lightning. And I think he ha yeah, he has to blow up the disc now. If he doesn't, he's dead. He has to blow up the disc. 
And that's what he does. He's blowing up the disc. I'm taking an extra damage, by the way, because I forgot to do that because I now draw three cards with that Howling Mind. But now he has to blow everything up. So here, here, this is what happened, what I talked about earlier. I'm taking the, the mana burn damage from the Suchi, dropping to eight. And I mean, he's on four. I'm on eight. Evil Eye. Wow, is he going to make it? I mean, he's on four again. That means he's not in bolt range. Ooh, this is great. But of course, Dane's hand was pretty empty as well. So I'm also helping Dane here. If he can find... Oh, wow, wow, wow. Finding a goblin grenade, finishing it all. Wow. <laughs> this was super close. What I wanted to say is... Um, if he could have uh, found a drain life and untapped his lance, he probably would have won this game. What I mean, this was a really nice match. If you look at these three games, they were very, very close. Yes, they were quick because it's EC, you know, it tends to be a bit more aggressive. And of course, I'm playing a super quick deck. Um, but I really, really enjoyed these matches. Uh, thank you, Dane, also for bringing such uh, an interesting mono black deck to the table. When I first saw the black mana, I thought, okay, this is going to be, you know, Bump Knights, Hindu Turex, that kind of stuff. Um, I have not expected it's very aggressive brew. Um, with, there's nothing wrong with those decks, by the way. Those are be those are very good decks. Very. Uh, there's a reason a lot of people play with them. Uh, but it's nice to see something else. And um, yeah, just Dane, you know, thank you for the, for this game. Uh, here you can see my deck in the background, uh, by the way. And if you'd like to support the channel, then you can do that by, well, actually you just did it by watching the content on this channel. Thank you very much. If you're not using an ad blocker, thank you very much. You know, it, uh, it, it brings in a couple of pennies, so it's all helpful. And um, you can like it, you can leave a comment. Let me know what you think of EC, if you wanna see more EC, uh, what kind of EC decks. If you like me actually playing a little bit more aggro, you know, some people have been asking me, can you play a little bit more aggro? I'm also trying to, um play a little bit more budget again you know um because i i can do that too i love i love budget builds i love reprints so all that so i mean let me know what kind of decks uh you'd like to see and i can always check my collection out and, and see what i can brew um what else is there uh, of course timmy talks patreon our patreon page where you can become a patron uh dane is actually a patron of the channel thank you dane for your support and um if you want to support me too uh, you can check out the Patreon page and you can kind of see uh, what you can do to support me and what I'll do in return for your support. So it already starts at $1. And talking about Patreon and talking about the patrons, let's take a look at the end scroll. And let's take a look at the patrons of Timmy Talks. What shall we do with the drunken What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Ik het als fikker te samba kazee.